me once again. Um, we have been dealing with um, a topic uh, titled, I am the light of the world. And when we talk about light, we talk about energy. And uh, the truth is that uh, we are living in a time of crisis, energy crisis. You know, when, when you look at the, the oil production, for instance, most of the countries who are, are known for producing oil have reached their peak. Very interesting. So everything is being going down the hill. Actually, as a matter of fact, um, I had a whole list of uh, cities, but uh, doesn't really make a, any, any difference. The fact is that most of the main countries have now stopped producing the amount they used to produce. Now they're going down. So that leads us in what, uh, what we call a, an oil crisis. And we all know what happened when demands exceeds production, what happens? Price prices. Price. Price. It hits a crisis. And it's very interesting because prices tend to rise. You know, yesterday we were talking, yesterday I, 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 we drove by a gas station and I saw the gas is going to uh, two digits again. And I was amazed. I said, wow. And I remember, you know, when I was young and stuff, I remember when I came to Canada and uh, there was 50, 56 cents a liter. I remember uh, once I saw one in, I guess, about 40, and everyone was going, everyone was in Toronto, close to um, the zoo, and uh, it, was, it was amazing. Now today, to see, to barely see a 96 cents a liter, that's amazing. It is interesting because that has raised crime, because now people are into either uh, smuggling gasoline or stealing gasoline from, from people. Actually, as I, I heard recently, Someone in a church, someone left his car parked in the parking lot and someone came and zipped mm -hmm. the gas out. I hope it doesn't happen today to anyone of us. But the, the fact is crime will rise yes. when like, there is a crisis. Now, that also increase, uh, increases the difficulty traveling. I guess we all, we all have seen that. We all have seen how prices have gone um, uh, to, the, to the sky and we have also seen how now even carrying you know, luggages, you know, or checked in luggages. Now we have less and less and less. And now they used to serve full meals. <laughs> now barely they give you a glass of water and <laughs> some cookies. And... So now what, how, what, what's, what's our world's um, solution to that? Now we call that alternative solution. They look for an alternative form of energy. They have, you know, now cars today come with a flex fuel sign. Some are turning to hybrid type of cars that run half electricity and half gasoline. Now there are others who are fully electric. electric. Now there is all sorts of alternatives. People want to face, want to overcome the crisis. But the truth is, and we all know that, this crisis will not be solved. And we're going to hit a very serious crisis. A very serious one. And I want us to read from the Bible that there is going to be an oil crisis towards the end of history. And that's found in the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, ch chapter 25. And I would like everyone who has a Bible to please help us or help me reading chapter 25. And we're going to read from verse 1 through 3. And I'll like, I'll like, I'll like to start asking Brother Jerry to please help me with Matthew chapter 5. 25, sorry. Verses 1 through 5. 1 through 3. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Thank you. Here we find there is no, no oil. oil. We were just talking about oil. Yes. Now, verses 3, I mean, 4 through 8, Brother Russell. Yes. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bride and tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Thank you. So there was a 
oil lacking, and now what we find is there is an oil crisis, because a crisis hit, and there is no oil. Now let's read verses 9 through 13. Sister Angela, could you please help me with that? But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and for you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. What therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour, wherein the Son of Man cometh. Thank you so much. So we're talking about an oil crisis within our church. We're talking about, about a moment in which there is going to be a crisis and there will be some people who will be missing that specific type of oil. Mm -hmm. Now, we all know what that oil is. We know it's the Holy Spirit. Yes. And uh, the very fact that here we're the few of us, it, it tells us that we're, we might be hitting that crisis yes. right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a passage of the Spirit of Prophecy I would like to read. It says, For all who desire to follow Him, He's a his example is left on record. Prayer <coughs> sanctify his ministry. Strength and vigor for daily duty are devoured from worshiping God in the beauty of his holiness. The lamp must be filled with holy oil before its light can shine amid the moral darkness. So in other words, he's saying that we need to have that type of oil if we want to, to be Example, if we want to be lights, as it were. Yes. Now, how do we fill those lamps, according to what, what I just read? How do we make sure when the crisis hit, we have enough oil? How do we do that? Prayer. Prayer. Amen. That's what it says there. Prayer. Now, are we filling the shortage of the Holy Spirit? Are we filling that? Because the Spirit of Prophecy tells us that as, as time goes on and we approach time of the end, the Holy Spirit will be withdrawing. Now, have we felt that shortage? Have we felt around us? Just we are talking about darkness and how it is increasingly seen. Now, the Spirit prophecy in the Sarif just says, everything in the world is in agitation. The signs of the times are ominous. Coming events cast their shadows before. The Spirit of God is withdrawing from the earth. And calamity follows calamity, by sea and by land, and keeps on going so far and so forth. Now, what about our spiritual lives? Have we felt that we might be lacking that oil? Are we feeling the crisis ourselves? Now, the important element is that as well as when there is an oil crisis, there is then a crisis, I mean, it affects traveling. Now, do we need to do any traveling? Do we have any traveling to do? What type of traveling is that? I have to go back home. Well, you purchase a regular ticket, so that's not a problem. Yes, we, are trying. Yes. we have to travel. It says, go ye therefore where? To all the world. Now, how do you get to all over the world? Don't you need to travel? travel. There is a crisis. And that crisis means that we are going to have travel getting everywhere. Yes. So there is. This crisis is not make-believe. It's a real crisis. You know, for every real thing in the Bible, there is a counterfeit. Yes. And now people are scared about the old crisis. People are really scared. You know, they say, well, what happens if we run out of oil? What are we going to do? Well, the Bible is telling us there is a more important type of oil. And especially for us as a church, if we run out of oil, we run out of the, the fuel we need to take our message out. So we, we, we find Matthew that tells us that we have a commission to the world. We find Revelation that says the same thing, Revelation 14, 6 through 12. We know that. So and the problem is that if we're running out of oil, we might not finish the work. And that's really worrisome. 
you know, there, there's people who believe that the end will end in December 21st. I don't know if you were aware of that. And uh, I happen to have family who are really into that. And they're praying, please God, delay the destruction. And I was just thinking about that. And I says, well, you know, I'm trying to pray for the opposite. I want to bring, bring us to the end. I want to do my part, but I want these things to end as soon as possible. And here, there are these people praying, please delay, delay. And we might be on the delaying part now. Now, what happens when there is an oil crisis and there is issues of traveling? What do people do? We, we already talked about it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. What do people do? What are people doing today? Stealing. Mm -hmm. Well, stealing, yeah. But there is another way people are trying to solve it. If I had my projector, I could show you, but I don't know. If you want, you can connect. That's OK. <clears throat> alternatives. Alternatives, yes! Brother, we could look into alternatives. Now, what type of alternatives can we, can we find? We need to substitute the pure oil for something else that will produce yeah. the so-called evangelism. Now, people are using music as well. If the Holy Spirit is withdrawing from the earth, it's bring people through music. And it seems to be working in some churches. People are coming by the thousands. Yes. And they all love the music. They all like the praising. There is a... This cheap gospel going on. And people are trying to find different ways to substitute prayer. People are finding that prayer might, it's too simple. You know, really, we need something else, more complicated. Like all type of alternative oils. You know, they went to look for um, how do you, ethanol. Yeah. Ethanol is the, the one they make from corn. So, but is there an alternative for the Holy Spirit? Can we find a second type of energy? No, no there isn't. And we need to be aware of that. The enemy will try to make us believe that if we find an alternative solution, we will be good. But that's, the spirit of prophecy says prayer is the breath of the soul. I mean, you know that. That's in, or here's in the book of prayer, but I believe it's also in the um, steps to Christ. No other means of praise can be substituted and the health of the soul be preserved. There is no other way to keep our lives, spiritual lives going on, unless we breathe, unless we pray. Prayer brings the heart into immediate contact with the wellspring of life, and it strengthens the sinew and the muscle of our religious experience. Now, the only way we have not to be found lacking the day of the crisis is to make sure that we are praying. Prayer. There is no substitute for prayer. Now, but okay, we need to pray, but what is what is the solution? Let's let's look into a, another solution for the oil crisis. How do we get the oil we need? I'd like us to turn into the first uh, epistle of to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 10. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, Brother Fernando, please tell me reading 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians. Dice, Pero Dios nos la reveló a nosotros por el Espíritu, porque el Espíritu todo lo escudriña, aún lo profundo de Dios. It's very interesting that when people have found that the, the, the wells of oil have run, em have run empty, they have tried to deal deeper. Deeper. Amen. And we need to do the same thing. Here he's saying that the Spirit searches all things. Yeah, what? The deep things of God. How deep do we go? Because out of the ten virgins, there is no doubt that five well into drilling superficially. They were into just trying a little bit, ah, that, that's enough. And the other five, for sure, went deeper. They had a deeper, deeper experience. It says, spiritual prophecy, the commandment keeping people of God are to prepare for this time of trial by obtaining a deeper experience in the things of God and a practical knowledge of the righteousness of Christ. 
So we have to have a deeper. Now, that means that if we spend 10, 20 minutes praying, we need to start to increase in that time. If we spend 10, 20, half an hour, an hour studying, we need to go deeper into that Bible study. Are we willing to do that? Because that's what we are called to do. If we don't, if we don't want to be found when the crisis hit, and then we're found without <coughs> oil. Now, if we think of Jesus, where did Jesus won? Where, where did he win the victory when he was on earth? When he was praying, yes. There, he drilled deeper. You know, we, we, are, we, are, we are told that Jesus would go and spend whole night praying there, drilling deep. So when he knew that crisis would come, he would be ready. And uh, many Christians are waiting for the crisis to hit to be more consecrated. Many people are believing, you know what? Once we know the Sunday laws in the States, and we know it's time. Then we'll consecrate our lives. Then we we'll move out into the, into the uh, fields. And we will do changes in our lives. Now, you want me to tell you something? What for the Protestant world, what, what, what the rapture is for the Protestant world, is the, the Sunday law is for us as Seventh-day Adventists. We believe, oh, they're all lost. They're lost because they believe in the rapture. They're waiting to be taken. And then the seventh period and so forth and so forth. And it, happened, it is happening to us as Seventh-day Adventists. We're waiting for the Sunday law to hit. Then we know the crisis is coming. Then we basically we do the same thing as the virgins. <coughs> we'll go and start looking for the oil when the oil might already be done. Now there, there's a saying that says victorious warriors win first and then go to war. Very interesting saying. Victorious warriors win first and then they go to war. While defeated warriors go to war first and then they seek to win. This is a Japanese soldier who wrote that. And it's so true. This is the time we need to be drilling. Whenever the crisis hit, that's not in our reach. We can't control that. But we need to be ready when that happens. So we need to win the victory first before we go into war. The greatest victories to the Church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth, or by the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chamber with God when earnest agonizing faith hold, lay holds upon the mighty arm of power. Amen. So our victory is not to be won once the crisis comes and then we face everything, but it's to be won in the chamber audience of God. Now, where can we drill? Let's talk about drilling. You know, because if I'm going to be doing some drilling, I need to be sure that I'm going to be drilling at the right spot. Where do we drill? The Word. Pardon? The Word. The Word of God. But there is a special place <laughs> to drill. Um, when we, because of time, I don't think we will read the whole Bible verses. In the Old Testament, Exodus 27, 20 says, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, sorry, pure oil olive beaten, by the light to cause the lamps to burn always. So they were supposed to get, they were supposed to, um, to uh, um, get oil from olives, mm. but they were supposed to be beaten. Yeah. All right. Now when we read Isaiah 53, 3 and 5 says, And he is despised and rejected of men, men of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we did, and we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. But you, he was wounded. He was for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. 
because of the beaten, because of his sacrifice, we're saved. And that tells us of something. Because of his sacrifice, yeah. is that we have eternal life. And if we were to drill in the same place where that happened, our experience would grow deeper and deeper and deeper. It says the Holy Grows were his center of prayer. There, secluded from every human eye, he communed with his Heavenly Father. His moral powers were strengthened by his meditations and communion with God. So basically what we're talking here is if we want to drill, drill in the last moments of Jesus' life. That's where we're to drill because from there is that we get our experience. We get our salvation from there. And uh, we find Revelation 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. So, brethren, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. And He is the only one who can give us the oil we need. So may Lord help us that we do not substitute prayer or anything else. That we make of our duty to drill deeper, especially in the last moments of Jesus. Because it's there where we find this special oil. It's there where we find encouragement for the difficult times. So may the Lord bless each one of us. And may the Lord make our experience to go deeper. For now, it's my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.